Hello once again, audience. I just spent the last 20 minutes doing this without audio recording, so this is painful. We're going to talk about value converters today for Windows Phone. Uh, this was something that was always magical to me when uh, I first started working with WPF, XAML, and uh, with Windows Phone. I uh, always avoided it, or I just try to copy and paste uh, any existing implementations because I was, you know, confused as how it worked. And if you actually take a minute to look at it, it actually isn't that bad, and it's very, uh, very useful for many situations. Um, so let's take a look. The uh, what we're going to be doing is uh, implementing the interface iValue converter, which provides a way to apply custom logic to a binding. It's also culturally aware, so you can uh, actually give uh, the culture info as a parameter um, for any conversion or logic anything that you want to do with this uh, that's good so you can actually localize as you are binding um, which is what can be hard if your data is not localized already and uh, you actually don't have to use it if you don't want to which is also nice so I'm going to try to make this a little shorter than my last one. It was uh, 17 minutes of the last video, and the one I didn't actually have any recording, like voice recording on, was 20. So I'm going to try to keep this under 15 if possible. I have some uh, pre-recorded, um, pre-written, I should say, uh, code, just to save a little bit of time. But I'm going to go over the important things in depth, uh, so hopefully you guys uh, can understand it, and I don't go over it too fast. So. Let's uh, jump into the code. Um, we're going to look at the main page here first. Basically, we just have a single page like we uh, like I did in the last example, or if you haven't seen it, it's just a, a blank page, no uh, pivots or anything like that. I have a list box, which is going to represent the data that we're going to be using to uh, visually show this demonstration. I've pre-set up the styling of the list box, so I have a data template. Uh, for the data that it's bound to for each item. Uh, it's just going to be a stack panel that is uh, horizontal. So to the very left, we're going to have an image. Uh, right after the image, uh, on the right, is going to be another um, structure of stack panels. So this is going to be a vertical orientation stack panel. And inside are two horizontal oriented stack panels. Uh, so you're going to have them being bound to name and phone number and that goes um, that's for this object that I created to bind to our list box it's just an employee with a name job title phone number you know basic stuff um, the way that we're going to be binding that is the same way that uh, I usually bind anything uh, for that and that's with an observable collection for the data context of our list box so I said a lot of things there, and let's just uh, start working on it. So first, uh, I think we want to get the list box bound up quickly, and so we can kind of see what it looks like uh, as is right now. And then I'll talk about how we're going to use the the actual uh, converter. Um, also, you may notice I have two resources here I added, uh, boss and other. These are images that are going to be uh, represented inside of our XAML. Uh, you'll be able to see that right here. We have an image, but as you notice, there's no source uh, defined on this image yet. Uh, this is where our converter is going to be uh, useful, right here. But uh, first, uh, let's go back and let's just set this up quick. So we're going to have an observable collection of type employee. We're going to call it my data. All right, and then uh, to save a little bit of time, I uh, ahead of time set up a little method that just loads this observable collection with a bunch of employee objects. So load data, and let me just paste that in. All right, so as you can see, the observable collection adds a new employee and this is name, job title, and phone number. You notice all of them pretty much have the same job title except me. My job title is boss. It's quite fitting. And this is going to be what our converter is going to be queued on. It's going to be looking at the job titles and determining, based on the job title, which image or icon to show to the left of each person or each employee object. Um, 
This could be done many ways, but I chose to do this for this example because it's easy. Visually, you can see what's happening, and uh, it's also uh, pertinent in, in the sense that um, a lot of things that you get on your phone may, when you're developing, may be from a database, you know, or um, some other source where you don't have control over what the data actually is coming in. So that's when a converter really is necessary. I mean, I could easily just add a property to this employee object uh, called, you know, icon or something like that and just give it a relative path and it wouldn't be a problem. It would still work. But I'm getting a little ahead of myself. Let's, let's jump into uh, what we're actually doing here. This right here, this class, work status image converter, is actually our, uh, this is the class we're going to use to convert. And if I go into it, you can see here that it, it implements the interface iValue converter. And let me just jump in there real quick so you can see. It has two methods, uh, convert and convert back. Both of those have to be implemented and I'll talk about them right now. Uh, convert is basically exactly what it says. It takes in your value and converts it to whatever code you write. So whatever logic you put in here, it converts it, returns it back for the binding. So uh, I'll, talk, I'll, I'll make it clear exactly what's happening here from the XAML. We'll follow it directly in and we'll be able to uh, see what we're doing. But essentially what I'm doing is I am taking the job title and I am based off of what the job title is on each employee object. I'm determining what I'm going to return as a image path. I'm either going to return boss or they're going to be just a generic other. And uh, I'll get in more depth uh, when we get in the XAML of how exactly that works. I had to implement convert back because it's required for the interface, but I'm not actually using it for this example. All right, so uh, this is set up right now. I think we'd actually be able to, you know, let's run this and see exactly what our structure looks like. We don't have anything right now. Why is that? That is because we have not set the data context for the list box. Always have to set that to your data, which in my sense, or in my case, is the observable collection. So now it'll work fine. Bring this in here. All right, so this is this is what it looks like. Here's our structure. As you can see, the icons are empty, and that's to be expected because in the XAML, right here, this image has no source. Now, we could easily set this source by hand and say, you know, slash resources slash boss PNG. And uh, I believe this actually should work. I lied, it doesn't work. But uh, something similar to that, I don't know what the U what the absolute URI is. Um, it could just need a tilde or something like that, but you get the idea. You can set the you can set the source directly uh, for this and it'll work just fine. Oh, I think I discovered why. It's resources. Let's run it again. Amazing. So each one of these now is, has the boss icon, but that's not very useful for us. And like I said before, we could actually have a property on each employee that determ that that'll actually hold this value, and we can you know automatically add it. But we're going to use a converter to simplify things and determine what we want. So we're going to leave the source blank for now, and we'll go back to it. Excuse me, I'm uh, literally running out of breath here. I think this is the fourth time I've run through this. I'm going kind of quick. So what we need to do right now is we need to expose our work status image converter class to the XAML. So we need to expose the namespace to this XAML so that we can actually use it inside of here. And I think this is the tricky thing that people sometimes don't understand or they get confused about or you know they maybe they don't notice it and it's like it's just magically works down here I don't understand so what we're gonna do is basically these they're already doing it multiple times here they're exposing namespaces of, of Microsoft's internal assemblies and things like that we're gonna create one for ourselves, and I'm just gonna steal this one 
paste it in. We're going to call it converters. And instead of this nonsense, we are going to say CLR namespace. And then we are going to give it the namespace of this class. And that's essentially saying look in the namespace and then the model folder. There we go. So the names this the namespace of this application is converter example the folders models so we're saying hey expose this folder or namespace to the XAML so that we can use it and in order for us to actually easily use this converters more specifically we want to use work status image converter we are going to set up a uh, a resource that we can use basically a key that we can use down in here to reference this exact class and you do that by going phone application page and this is going to be no just phone first and then phone definitely don't want that capital there and then dot resources I don't know why IntelliSense is not picking this up. This should be correct. Oh, can't have a capital P. Because it's defined right there. Alright, so inside of here we're going to create a key. And we're going to say, we have to say, hey, converters and then we have to say we're gonna go inside of converters and we're gonna go hey this is the this is our i-value converter class we're gonna use this but we want to use it simply so we're gonna say global key not field modifier global key is equal to and we're gonna say work status image converter this is the name this is the key that's gonna allow us to uh, use it throughout the XAML easily. Alright, so now when we want to use this, all we have to do is just right here use this. Uh, this worries me when this stuff is like that. Hopefully it's nothing. Let me just rebuild quick. Problem solved. Awesome. Alright, so now down in here, let me explain how this is going to happen. We have the key, so we, now we can use our converter. We discussed earlier that we are going to use this converter to determine which path or essentially which image we're going to use. We're just going to send back the path of the image. So we're normally the source would be put right here. The path would be set right here, but we're going to use the converter to do that. And how we do that is we set up the binding to our object, which would be the employee. And we're going to bind to the property of job title. Now I know that sounds strange because you're like, well, job title, that's not going to work because if we set the source to a job title, it's going to be like source equals boss. I don't know where boss is. That's not a file. That's not a path. And that's absolutely right. What we're going to do is we're going to hit comma and we're going to use converter. And this says, hey, uh, we're going we're gonna to take this value. We're going to send it into whatever we define here as a parameter to this converter class and it's going to spit out whatever we're going to use for the overall source. And that's how it works. So this converter is basically going to be set so that we can we can basically use everything. And uh, for the converter, all we have to do is just give it our static resource that we defined right up here. Work status image converter. So we're going to say converter equals static resource the resource key is the work status image converter and that's it and like I said all it does is it passes in the job title into the work status image converter as a parameter and I'll show you it comes in as value I cast it as a string because it's a job title I say hey is it equal to boss cool send back the path to the boss boss image otherwise give it the other image and that's it it's really simple. 
uh, this, you know, you can do almost any logic in here. I mean, you can convert uh, bytes, you you know, to uh, bitmaps. You can do anything, booleans, all that stuff. It's really nice. Uh, you can even use it to determine the visibility of things. You can bind to visibility uh, UI elements uh, and return a Boolean value based on some crazy logic. Uh, you you can do a lot of stuff with this that's really nice. So we've set this up, and uh, I think it should work now. Let's take a look at it. Oops, way over here. Bring it in, and what do you know? Kevin's not a boss. Jim's not a boss. Blake is a boss. Kaylee, she's not a boss. Kyle's not a boss. Sarah's not a boss. So it works exactly as we described and exactly how we wanted it to work. Uh, you know, I hope this makes it easier for people to understand. I hope uh, I didn't go too quick or anything like that. Um, it's not too bad once you get into it, and it's a really powerful thing, especially when you don't have control over uh, the data that you're binding to. Um, if you can't manipulate that, you might have uh, certain properties that you would love to convert. Like this is great for converting date times and things like that and to make them look really nice in the, in the XAML without having to do a huge amount of code behind. Nobody wants to do that to giant lists of things. It's easier to do it as you're binding. Super simple and uh, quite elegant uh, compared to other methods. Um, I'm going to have a lot more videos coming out. Uh, these actually take a lot of time. I'm surprised. Hopefully I can get more efficient at doing this, and hopefully uh, I can actually record my voice uh, the first time instead of doing it four times. So uh, until next time, later.